Hi and welcome back. This is Grade 6 Lesson 14 and today we're going to learn a little bit about broadcasting variables, etc. And um, before we get too much into that, I want to talk a little bit about the things to learn, um, which is variables. We're going to learn about these things called variables and briefly put, they are to track information. And I'll put that in bold because that's a very important concept we need to understand. And then we'll talk a little bit about broadcasting and when to use it. So let's go back to our game, and I have a couple things to go over. The first is, you'll notice the player looks a bit different when we play the game this time. He's a little bit uh, discolored, and that's because um, some people pointed out to me that I was using someone else's work last time, which is, of course, copyright infringement. We don't want to do that. So I uh, created my own little graphic there with flames coming out the back and everything. It's not hard to do. Don't break copyright. You'll also notice I've created a missile, and I haven't done anything that we haven't learned so far. Um, all I did was create an event, the flag, it's when it starts, it hides the original, and it forever checks to see if the space key is pressed, and it creates a clone of itself, and it waits for half a second. So what the waiting does is means it can't go back to checking if the space bar is pressed to create another clone, so it kind of slows down the rate of fire. And I'll show you that a little bit in a second. And then, of course, we tell the clones what to do, which is to show they move to the ship, wherever the ship is, and then they move forward at a rate of 10 steps. And so, briefly to show you, you'll notice they just kind of do that. And uh, if I change this, make it slower, for example, you'll notice they fire at a much higher rate of speed. And if I change it to a higher rate, um, it changes to a very, very slow rate of speed. And so, uh, think of this as one way we can control the speed, and later we'll learn how to make that change with power-ups and things. Um, you can change this value using a variable, and we'll get into that a bit later. One of the things you may not notice is that uh, when I shoot, if the missile hits the ship, uh, you'll notice nothing happens. It just goes right through it. So we, one of the things we want to do is we want to tell the ship when to destroy. So we can do it just like when it touches the player. And we can say if and touching and the missile, then we can tell it to do something unique to clones, which is to delete that clone. And so if we do this, you'll notice, oh, Try this again. I want to try and get two of them lined up here for you. You'll notice that one shot will go through a whole bunch of them, and maybe we don't want that. We want the missile to delete as well. So, what we may want to do is try and see if we can uh, do a deletion here too. So, if touching black ship enemy, then delete this clone. So, let's see if that works. Seems to work. Not at all. Okay, so we need it to uh, delete, and we'll work on that later, but that doesn't work, and there's some reasons why. And we'll get into that when we get into broadcasting. But for now, we do have one where if the missile hits it, it will, um, it will delete. So, not a big deal. We can do that. Let's talk about variables. Um, one of the things people like to track about in games is number of destroyed enemies or destroyed ships. As you can see, I'm destroying a whole bunch, but um, nothing is being kept track of. So uh, we need to keep track of anything. And if you remember my statement here, variables are to track information. And the way we create variables, they are a data or data, depending on how you prefer to sound it. And you can make them. You can make a variable to track just about anything. And variables have two options, really, which is for all sprites or for this sprite only. Um, and that just means what can access it. Um, for ships destroyed, I want to actually let anybody kind of access it, whether it be the black ship, the player, or the missile. And, and I'm going to use destroyed ships as my variable. And you'll notice it puts this little block, and we can put it up near the top so it keeps track. And when you create a variable, you have an object which can be placed inside anywhere. You can place a number or a string. 
And then you have some options. You have set and you have change. And you also have show and hide. And the show and hide are pretty simple. It just hides it on the screen. The set and change, the set puts it to a particular value, and the change does incremental changes by one, by two, so on and so forth. And so when we destroy a ship, we actually want to change the value by one before we destroy it, because, of course, um, we want to keep track of it destroying a ship. There goes one, two, three, four, and now you see how we can keep track of that, yes? So that seems to work, right? And um, it works. So we now have a way to keep track of destroyed ships. Um, one of the things you may notice is that when I restart the game, it, it doesn't go back to zero. So one of the things we will need to do is we will need to tell it when the game starts to go to zero. Now, I can do it here on the black ship. I can do it on the player. It uh, doesn't matter because it's a global variable, which means anybody can access it. The player, here the ship does it, um, the missile could do it too. It doesn't really matter so much. Okay, so we now have something keeping track of that. Now maybe we want to keep track of a variable such as lives. Um, and so for that, I'm going to do lives. And we'll do it for all sports, because typically you have a certain number of lives in a game. And <clears throat> one of the things we, we want to do is keep track of it. So when the game starts, we usually like to have a set number. I'm going to set the lives to three. And um, <clears throat> before we had this if touching player one, stop all. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change his lives. Um, change lives by negative one. And we'll destroy the ship. And what that should do is it should keep track of that. Now, you'll notice it lets me go into negative lives. We need to do something about that. So <clears throat> we can come here, and of course, we know how to use if statements, right? If um, we can use a comparison, this one, and we can get our data because we can use it anywhere there's a number. Lives is less than one, then of course, stop all, right? And that's nice and dandy. It will let me get down to zero lives, um, and then it will stop the game. So that's all working, but maybe I want my guy to flash when this happens. So now here's where we're going to get into the broadcast. Um, I can't directly change the player from here when he gets hit from the ship. There's nothing I can do. I, I can't go into the looks and say change player look by... Whatever. I can't do any graphical effects. Um, so I need to send out a broadcast, kind of like a radio signal. Think of everybody that has a stereo. They can all listen to the radio. Um, all of these can listen to the radio. You, they just have to have a signal. So one of the things we can do is we can actually send out a signal when this happens. And so I'm going to send out broadcast message, and I'm going to do a new one, player hit. And this becomes really useful because when I'm here as the player, is like, okay, cool. I'm doing nothing, but if I get this message from the radio, the player hit, I can now do something. So if I want him to flash, I can use something like a repeat 10 here, and I can tell him to um, <clears throat> change his color. I don't know, I think 100 might be the full total, but we'll see, right? So now when he gets hit, You'll notice he kind of flips out, and then he flips out again, right? And maybe we want to slow the color effect down and do it like four times. Okay. Maybe not so slow, maybe 0.25 seconds. So he flashes real quick. Okay. So we've now sent a broadcast message, and if you watch when he does it in large scale, um, he will change colors for up to a second, and then if he gets hit again, of course, I got hit too many times, the game stops. So now we're there. We have it, we have it receiving that radio signal where it will 
kind of change what he looks like and all of that. And this is used like if you want to make him flash or do anything like that. Um, because again, this one cannot, this ship cannot tell the player what to do. It can only send a broadcast. Um, but the broadcast can be interpreted by the player to do something. So it's one way of sending uh, commands back and forth, if you will, between the two. So the last thing we need to do is we need to um, fix this missile thing, which is it wasn't deleting when it touched the black uh, ship. And so I want to put that back in there. I want to fix this. So I'm going to do a little bit of troubleshooting. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm going to try it. If touching black ship, um, delete this clone. And I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and use this one right here, where if it's, if it's touching the missile, delete this clone. I'm going to try and tell it to wait for 0.1 seconds to see if that will work. Nope, that just deletes the missile. Okay, so the missile's deleted. Um, well, that didn't work. Let's try maybe making this one wait as well. Let's see if this works. Ah, oh, there we go. We just made them wait a second. And the reason we made them wait a second is so that it can actually register. So what was happening is it was deleting this one, and then before it would go to be able to delete, it would say, well, if it's touching the enemy. Well, the enemy's already been deleted. So all we did was we made it wait for just a split second so that it could actually register that. And uh, it seems to work just fine. Maybe we can speed that up just a little bit. Wow. Okay. I don't know why it's crashing like that, but let's go back to point one. That seemed to work really well. Right. Why am I getting paused when I get hit? Why is the game pausing now? That's the other question. So you can see that there's some bugs in there somewhere, but you know, things to work with. Um, we can try and figure it out. Usually when it hits the ship, broadcast, player hit, delete this clone, should work. And broadcast. And... Oh. One, two, three, four, five. Not sure, it's getting stuck somewhere, but... Again, that's all with working with it. Maybe it's back here with the whole weight. Maybe that's actually messing it up, I'm not sure. Let's try getting rid of the weights. And now, uh, for the rest of the time, uh, I'm not teaching you anything new, I'm just debugging. And as you can see, uh, it's just kind of going about its day here. So, clearly it has nothing to do with the weight statements. Maybe it has something to do with the broadcast. So, let's get rid of the broadcast here. Seems to be something to do with the broadcasting statement. So let's put it back in real quick. Player hit. So let's check our broadcast. Repeat four times. And that's it. Um, was it waiting? Maybe 0.25 seconds is not a Good number. Let's try, maybe it only takes one decimal place. Let's try that. Let's try getting rid of the weight. No, it really doesn't do anything, does it? <clears throat> hmm. Well, somehow the broadcast is actually stopping the game, and we'll figure that out a bit later. It was working earlier, and 
something for me to debug. But you understand how it works, and um, yeah, we'll keep it going from there. All right, everybody, have a good time, and I'll see you next time. Okay, so I found the error, and um, I just wanted to finalize this with you. It seems to be that it has the color effect. Um, so I've changed to a ghost effect, and I'll just show you the difference here. Um, you can see that the code is all the same. It's still broadcasting player hit and all that. Um, but when I go to the looks, I do a, uh, a repeat, uh, whatever, 10 times, and I do the looks, um, change the color effect by 25, and then I can clear the graphic effects or whatever when I've done. And of course, I put in the weight to 0 0.2 seconds or whatever. And you'll notice that it just stops. It, it's, it's done. It's freezing. So it's having an issue with the uh, change the color effect, which is uh, interesting because I've never dealt with that before. Um, and as you saw earlier, it actually was working. So maybe there's something with the scratch servers. Uh, for the meantime, what I've done is I've just changed it to a ghosting effect. And this should create kind of a flashy, flashy effect. And as you can see, it creates some any kind of flashes for a bit. And then it goes back to normal. So um, as you can see, that kind of works and gets us everything we need. And now we have a working game. So clarified, and you got to see me debug.